Red Dirt Designs, invest in yourself. All right, to do this water droplet effect, you're only gonna need a couple things. I'd get you a good water bottle that you could spray the water droplets onto the project. You could probably just put it on your fingers and let them drip too. You just wanna do larger water droplets, it looks better. And then I have a heat lamp. A heat lamp speeds up the drying process so your water droplets don't get disturbed. If your water droplets get disturbed and they move around, it'll ruin your project. That's why you also need to have your project on a level surface. You want to lay your hood or your whatever part you're going to be painting to be as level as possible so your water droplets will sit. And um, you also don't want any wind, air, or anything to disturb those water droplets, so you want to be in a real still room. Um, but I'll show you how this effect works. Um, I got a black sign blank here. I just quickly painted it black. Um, just to show you guys this effect. I hope you guys enjoy. What you're going to want is, um, I, got the, I got these tack cloths on Amazon. I'll have an Amazon uh, affiliate link that, in my description there for you guys to get your own. But uh, they work really good for just getting all that dust off. That, I mean, it works really well. I saw that dust. I didn't even, it didn't even look like there was anything on it. But this does a great job of getting all that loose dust off of here. So, just going to dust that off. Um, because this is base coat and not clear coat, I don't have to do any sanding. I'm just going to spray this water bottle. I want to make sure I get my um, water droplets correct, so I'm going to try to make it where it just spits out. Um, larger droplets is what my goal is here. So we're just going to spray some big water droplets, hopefully. And you want to kind of make sure you're doing this evenly. You don't want to just have a couple spots where you spritzed a bunch and there's nothing anywhere else. But really, just have fun with it. There we go. Okay, my airbrush, I have it regulated down to about a little under 15 PSI. You just play around with it. You can even do a test panel before you do it on your actual project. I definitely highly suggest doing that, actually. And we're just going to hit this at a very sharp angle. I want to make sure I hit just this side of the water droplet. I'm going to aim it out towards you. So, come out this way. And I'm just going to... I'm going to be really careful not to spray too hard. Now these water droplets are they are just flinching, but they're not moving. They are, it'll ruin this effect. So I'm going really slow, being very careful. All right, I got you guys at a different camera angle. Just so you know, on perspective on where we were at, I was shooting white from this side. Now I'm gonna come in from this side at a sharp angle with a dark color. In this instance, it's just black. And you'll do this on any color. It doesn't matter. Um, I could have done yellow on one side and like a dark hunter green on the other, and and it would it would give that look that we're trying to get. We just want one side light and one side dark, and that'll show that water droplet. Okay, so now I'm gonna go at a sharp angle, same as I did. Make sure the black. You're not gonna probably be able to see this very well, and it doesn't need much because if I bury these I just want to barely hit it on this side this will give it that contrast to where it'll really look three-dimensional when it dries all right here it is a little closer so you can really see what I did one side of the droplets are white and the other side's black See how big they look? They look really bubbly now. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna put a heat lamp on this. It'll cause the water to evaporate. When that water evaporates, these water droplets will set onto it. The paint will actually dry in that exact formation and it'll look three-dimensional. Even when it's dry, it'll probably look just like this. So uh, put the heat lamp on it and uh, we'll uh, time-lapse this so you guys can see the process and hopefully it'll look awesome. You don't have to use a heat lamp. You could also just let this dry naturally just over time. It'll just take a little longer is all. 
It's about 60 degrees in my shop, so I just try to speed this up. Here's what it looks like when it's dry. It looks just about the same. It's pretty awesome how this works. Um, notice how it's dark on the top side and on the bottom it's white. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now we're ready to put some clear coat on. I actually got this clear coat off Amazon. Um, I'll include an Amazon link to this clear coat here. This is actually really affordable. It's like a little over a hundred bucks for a gallon. And uh, so you can do like a whole car with that. So I feel like it's a pretty good price. Um, I haven't had any trouble with it. Lays out just fine and it sands pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this four to one. It also has the mixing instructions right here on the side of the can. They're uh, pretty easy to read and it uh, makes it simple for uh, people that are learning, just learning. So um, the four to one on a mixing cup, you just find the four to one, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's four to one here. You find that on a paint mixing cup and you'll just go to the first, like if we go up to the two, and for the uh, first part, the four, and then on the one, you go to the next two. So it's, you just go to the two on this four, and then on the one, you go to the next two. I don't know if you can see that good or not, but that's how you uh, mix a uh, clear coat. At least this in particular, it's four to one. Not all clear coats are the same, so. Okay, that's all it takes. Just for a sign blank. Go ahead and mix this up. When we're dealing with small amounts of paint, I just use a popsicle stick. This is a large popsicle stick that I got at Hobby Lobby. And you just stir it. We're gonna also add a little bit of this House of Color Cobalt Blue. This is a candy uh, intensifier. And this will just dye the clear coat blue. And we're going to do that so it's got more of that water look. So this is just for fun. You don't have to do this. Um, this is just something I like to add in. So I'm just going to do like a drop or two. See what it looks like. There's three. I just want to barely tint it. There we go. See how it looks kind of like a, just gives a little blue color. It's just for fun. You always want to strain your paint in case there's anything that was in the bottom of your cup or something you may have missed, some dust or dirt or anything, a bug, a June bug, who knows what landed in that thing. So uh, this will just make sure nothing plugs up the nozzle on the paint gun. Okay, that definitely looks like plenty. All right, now we're ready to paint. Yeah, we let it dry overnight, and then all that dust that may have collected on there, we just want to do a light. This will also get rid of the, any of the overspray or dry spray that may have landed on it. Get rid of the loose stuff. Actually, it's quite a bit. So, now we're ready to go ahead and shoot our clear coat. Number three. And here it is, the finished project. If you like what you see, I'd really appreciate if you guys would smash that like button and hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet. Thank you.